This is my first week and a half or so after open heart surgery for valve replacement and how it compares to the same surgery I had about 13 years ago. That Monday, March 7th was day zero and that was the day I had the actual surgery. So I had to be in the hospital at 5 a.m. Surgery was at seven, estimated six hours or so. <clears throat> And my first level of conscious memory was sometime that evening. I remember waking up, kind of panicking because I couldn't breathe. <clears throat> Everybody saying, just calm down, breathe easy, you'll be fine. By Wednesday, day two, I was already walking 280 feet in a consistent walk. I did have some afternoon vomiting that I attributed to the opiates that I'd been taking. I had the push button dilated that I was using, and I started developing a pretty bad cough about this time. So I used the push button pain med once more that night before bed. By Thursday, day three, I was able to walk 330 feet. I'd completely stopped using the dilated, and that night before bed was the last night of having oxygen just for sleeping and I had one oxy pill only before bed to help me sleep. That day they also took the catheter out and the neck IV out. By Friday, day four, I walked 555 feet. Um, instead of just picking up my food, I was able to eat full meals by this point already, that early. It's already hard to sleep through the night in a hospital with devices buzzing at you. You know, people are waking you up to check your vitals, <coughs> to draw blood for lab work and the cough is what was really making it tough for me. Especially because I'd already stopped the pain meds, so I was taking a bit of a gamble that the <clears throat> pain wouldn't get so bad that I'd have to revert back to taking them. And it really wasn't that bad. It was only when I'd cough that I'd feel it. But the ability to get off those opiates fast as possible means you can start eating better, you feel better, your body just works better. And that was my first night without opiates, and even though I was off of them, there is a bit of a withdrawal, to say the least, on these, because they are a physically addicting drug. And the biggest difference is what you see in front of you versus when you shut your eyes in those images is very different. So it's very hard to sleep when every time you close your eyes, you see a bunch of weird stuff that's not really there. And what I found myself doing is grabbing onto the, the bed rail to try to anchor myself because in my mind at the time, <clears throat> I thought, okay, this will help sort of lock me in where I'm not floating in space. I'm at least grounded this way to try to help settle my mind so I can get some sleep. That night I borrowed the nurse's phone, called back home to my sister and was able to talk on the phone for the first time. Even though, as you can tell, my breathing and speaking is still very tough. That day, they also took the chest tubes out of me. The next Monday, day seven, they moved me from the ICU to the general cardiac care floor. I was able to take my first shower, standing up by myself, balancing myself during a week. So that felt awesome just to get clean again. And that next Thursday, day 10, I was released from the hospital that evening and was able to ride home in the hospital shuttle. Now, if you compare back to 13 years ago, I actually had two surgeries that week. I had the first one, the valve repair, and then four days later that gave out and I had a valve replacement. So we're going to use that valve replacement day, which was November 9th of that year, as our baseline so that we're comparing valve replacement recovery times. But I just want to make sure you understand there was an earlier surgery. That's part of why I had a lot more complications that first time. Now this time around, I've been living healthier as far as getting decent sleep and managing my stress and not drinking as much and, you know, much more regimented with my workouts and everything. But I'm also 13 years older than last time. And as we know, whether it's a wreck, a workout, or a hangover, 13 years makes a big difference in recovery time. The other advantage is that I kind of knew what to look for and what to think about and be aware of. But in the last couple of years, my heart has also been through 
a couple ablations, a couple of cardioversions, and a PFO closure. So there's been a lot more trauma to my heart in the last couple of years as well. Um, including, of course, the original surgeries 13 years ago. So the heart now, <clears throat> although better healthy habits, is a lot more worn out than it was the first time. For both cases, my first conscious moment was in ICU very late the night of the surgery. Now the first time, they pulled out my chest tubes, catheter, and neck IV all the day after the surgery. Versus this time, the chest tubes came out on day four and the catheter and neck IV came out on day three. I was also out of ICU day one the first time <clears throat> versus day seven this time. Now, even though I spent 17 total days in the hospital last time, it was 12 days after the valve replacement surgery versus 10 days this time. And the only reason it actually was even that long is because the rhythm uh, just wasn't quite right yet. Both cases, I started with a pretty bad cough around day three to four, and that's just something that I tend to have issues with. The first time, I was on oxygen all through the hospital and actually had to take oxygen home or to my sisters with me afterwards. So I didn't get off oxygen until around day 20 the first time versus day four this time. That's a huge difference. And at that day 20 or so, I wasn't able to walk any more than just around my sister's house versus being able to go walk a thousand feet or whatever, some fraction of a mile like I can now. So my activity level is much better as well, which makes sense knowing that my body's being able to generate enough oxygen itself. To me, one of the biggest things, like I mentioned earlier, is the narcotics. I wasn't off oxy, you know, narcotics, any of the pain meds, until day 28 before the first time versus day four this time. That's a huge difference. And as a result, by day 31 last time, I was still picking at food, um, barely, you know, I still wasn't eating a full meal, and I'd lost about 40 pounds in that period of time. This time, by day four, I was eating a full meal. That's a huge difference. And the fact that I'm not losing as much weight and able to maintain muscle mass and everything else just makes me overall more healthy. The first time I was able to talk on a phone, which you wouldn't think talking is that difficult, but when you're just struggling to get air in and out, <clears throat> talking is hard. And I wasn't able to talk on the phone until about day 30 the first time versus day four this time. This just kind of gives you an idea of what this first week and a half looks like after open heart surgery. And interesting to me is the differences from the first round 13 years ago versus now. And there's a lot of variables obviously that go in that. <clears throat> but overall, as difficult as this recovery is, it is so much easier than last time. I'm glad I've been through this once because had I not, I would just think how unpleasant this recovery is. But having had that for a comparison, it makes me really appreciate how fast and healthy and you know quickly this whole recovery is going compared to that first time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.